the way I got involved with SWAT was, uh, you know, my agent and Neil Moritzky, executive producer, you know, they came to me and were, were interested in me for the movie. And uh, I was over, obviously interested in the movie. And uh, it just happened. I was actually the last person on board, though. It was, uh, Sam was attached first. Colin got attached second. Then they got Michelle in. And then they were looking for that last character for DK. And, you know, I was the man. So it's like a job for. And here I am. So what caught your interest about the role? Well, you know, inside, I'm basically, I've been 14 my whole life, and I love, you know, the idea of running around playing hide, you know, cops and robbers and hide and go seek in the bushes and all that. So for me, it was just, it was a no-brainer. I thought the script was cool. I thought the cast was cool. I thought that the storyline was, was hot, you know, and it made a lot of sense to me to just be a part of a, a big event movie. Plus, it was my opportunity to, it was my first opportunity to be a part of a big event movie that was really going to be, like, released in the summer, huge. You know, the... The, the closest thing to this was Deep Blue Sea in terms of event, but this one was a, a full-on, you know, blitz, and um, I just wanted to be a part of it. I think it's a cool thing to be a part of. What would you say is the most challenging thing about doing this role? I think the most challenging thing about this particular role was just making sure that you did things and approached things with an authentic, you know, in an authentic manner. You know, just making sure that you know, everything you did was official and authentic and true to real life SWAT. You know, for me, that was the main thing. So, you know, we did a lot of training in the beginning. Like, we trained for maybe, it may have been a week to two weeks approximately, maybe 10, you know, 10 days or so, where we, we actually, you know, went through SWAT school, where we, you know, trained, did weapons training, and we dealt with MP5, you know, semi-automatic, um, guns and, 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 and semi-automatic Benelli shotguns and 9 millimeters and 45s and you know all kinds of night vision and, and we actually worked with live live ammo, live rounds and then after that we watched actual films of SWAT dealing with dangerous suspects and dangerous scenarios and how they approach things and how they deal with things and that was a whole nother level. Then after that we, we learned formations where we learned how to enter a building when there's a dangerous suspect in there, how to clear a room when you enter a room with a partner, how to clear a room using mirrors, um, how to, you know, there were so many little things that we learned, how to use a flashbang grenade before you enter a room, I mean, there was so, how to open a door, I mean, there were so many things that we learned, it was, a, it was an amazing experience, you know, definitely don't try to sneak in my house anytime soon, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Did you learn anything about yourself as an actor, about your acting skills? The, ca the character, the character uh, is not that deep, you know, the, the role is, doesn't have that much, enough depth for me to, you know, that's not the kind of role it is. Like I just did a film with Ray Liotta called Slow Burn, and uh, my character is basically torturing Ray for most of the movie mentally, and that's a whole different thing, and in that movie I learned a lot about myself, and a lot about, you know, acting per se. This movie is more like... It's kind of like, if you were to put it in musical terms, an action movie is like doing a concert, and a pure drama or a pure comedy can be more like being in the studio actually making the record. So it's like, there's di there are differences, you know? There are differences. It's the same music, it's the same stuff, but it's just a different world. And I think that, you know, with, with, with action, it's more about the running and the jumping. And the, but there is acting in it, and there is, you know, great scenes in it, and it is fun, but it's just like, it's just like a lot of energy and it's just on fire the whole time, you know? Now, as far as being a rapper, you were one of the first rappers to ever start acting in movies. Can you tell us a bit about that? What was that like? Well, just, you know, being a... I've always been a person that's a... I'm a dreamer and I love to explore and I love... I don't believe in limiting yourself and, and, and not taking advantage of every opportunity if it's the right opportunity. So for me, acting was just something that kind of... It, it was something I dreamed about as a child, but I didn't know how to do both. And I had more access to music, obviously, just because of the nature of the kind of music I made, where I grew up and what was there. Music was right in front of me. But as I got more and more exposed to the entertainment industry, more and more opportunities came along for me to get in films, to be a part of films. So there was a, a, a period from around 85 to around maybe 92, 93, where... 
I did, you know, a few movies here and there, but it was sporadic. It wasn't consistent, and I wasn't really focused because I was primarily concentrating only on music. And then, you know, I basically lived with Quincy Jones for about a year and a half, maybe two years. And during that time, we had a lot of conversations about, you know, diversification in your career and taking your life to another level in terms of what you do and what you choose to do and the choices you make as an entertainer. And uh, around that same time, he came to me with the idea for the television show with Debbie Allen in the house. So I decided to do the show. And after doing the show, at first it was like it was tough for me because I wasn't used to getting up in the morning. I wasn't used to dealing with the TV and dealing with that schedule. But after a while, I really got into the show. Uh, by the time I really got, you know, got it really deep ingrained in me deeply, the show was done. We did about four seasons. So I just immediately started going into films. During the course of that time, I've been studying with a great acting teacher. His name is Aaron Spizer. And I've been really, really working on the craft and really, really studying really hard. I mean, you know, we've, I've been studying with him consistently for five years now. You know, but around that time, so, you know, it's four years to go to college. So, I mean, we've really been doing a lot of work and a lot of intense training to really make sure that I had the, the foundation underneath me so I wasn't just, you know, throwing myself in movies and floating. And if you, you know, you can watch the progression, if you watch the, the first episodes of In the House to the things I'm doing now, you can see the, the growth and um, the change that, uh, you know, that has happened and taken place. So, you know, that was basically it. You know, I just caught the bug and started realizing that I could enjoy myself even though it was a different outlet from music. I, I started realizing that creatively I could still feel that rush. It's just, you know, I had to find the joy in it. It's a different process, but there's a different kind of joy. Uh, I'm doing it now, and I really love it. I enjoy it, and I'd like to do it for as long as I possibly can. And as far as your music, you're an international star. Can you tell us about some of the countries that you visit and how they respond to you? How some of the fans respond? I've been, uh, I've been, you know, everywhere from Africa to Scotland to, you know, to Norway to Denmark to Sweden to, you know, to hanging out in Venice to Florence to you know, Japan to, you know, many different countries around the world and, you know, the main thing that's usually consistent is that they are some of the best fans in the world in terms of their love for the hip-hop music and their love for artists and I've always been embraced and given a lot of love by the international community all over the world. Like, I mean, I remember back in the days going to England and going down to Piccadilly Circus and playing video games and hanging out and, you know, and just getting getting introduced to the to the uh, to the culture from the old clubs like the Hippodrome all the way up to today, and you know you know meeting people who were from the the fancy part of town and, and meeting people who were from Brixton and you know just the the whole culture over in London and that whole world over there. It's a very interesting interesting world, you know. And then you know like you end up like you know I, I like going to Germany and or going to London and eating Surinese food. Like I would. You know, I don't meet many people from Suriname or, you know, when you're, when you're in New York. There's so, such a huge culture out there around the world, you know, people from Belize and people from all these different places. It's, it's beautiful. And um, I love to travel the world. I mean, that's one of my favorite things. I mean, right now I'm on the, I got the, uh, the cover of American, American Way. That's the American Airlines magazine. And I'm talking about Venice and, you know, and, and, and how it was to travel there and shop there and, and do all of that. And it's, you know, really cool. And a lot of these countries have their own style of hip hop now. How does yeah. that make you feel that they've been influenced by rappers like you? I think it, I think it's amazing. I think, quite frankly, I think France, you know, that language is probably one of the, the best languages in terms of hip hop. When you really listen, see, I don't really understand French. You know, speak a little and understand a little, so I don't understand enough to really understand the, the depth of what they're saying. But when you listen to the music and the way they sound, France. Those rappers over in France have an amazing sound, you know, the way they sound on top of the records. So it was, it was pretty cool. I actually made a record with a, a guy in Germany named Spax, you know, and he was rapping in Germany, German, and I was rapping in English, and we did that just for Germany, you know. The video never even came out here. It was cool. Now, we're doing a story on hip-hop jewelry. Have you ever used Jacob the Jeweler? Do you? I've used many, I've used many jewelers, you know. Um, definitely used Jacob and uh, the original guy, Tito is a guy that I bought, you know, like a majority of my jewelry from. Um, and, you know, you know, a lot of that, you know, the, 
a lot of the jewelry and a lot of the stuff that you know we started doing early on with the jewelry came from a lot of hustlers and a lot of guys that you know we were pat patterning patterning ourselves after you know what I'm saying and uh, I mean the jewelry really came into hip hop I mean you know cowboy from Flash Grandmaster Flash was wearing jewelry back in the days I mean everybody's wearing jewelry I think that I kind of brought it to the forefront with the with the gold chains and the big chains and stuff and that got popular and then Jam Master J May he rest in peace. Um, he went and got the, even a bigger chain. And then, you know, like if you look at my Walking with the Panther album cover, I had the big ice and, and the diamonds and all that because, you know, I was hanging with a lot of guys from uptown and that was like the thing at the time. And, you know, it, the jewelry has become like a part of the culture. I personally, you know, I don't do a lot of jewelry. I'm not spending my money on that. I'm not even going to sit here and lie to you. I'm not wasting a dime. So I'm not really that interested. But I understand that everybody wants to wear it. And, it's cool, you know what I'm saying? You know, I like it. But I, don't, I can't be spending my money on that, though. You and know, I'm not even going to lie to you. What about your music? Tell us what's going on with your new stuff. Um, the music, um, I'm getting ready to start on a new record. Uh, the name of the record is The Definition. It's my 11th album. Um, I just re-signed a, a deal with, my deal with Def Jam. We, we, redid a, we got a brand new contract, and I redid that and everything, so... All that's done, and uh, I'm about to start on a new record. And other movie projects? Uh, I, I have, like I, I said before, I have this film called Slow Burn with Ray Liotta. It's like a Usual Suspects type movie. Very interesting film. With, and Makai Fife and Tay Diggs also in it. And then I have another film called Mind Hunters with Val Kilmer and Christian Slater. It's a uh, action thriller about some, some FBI people who are being hunted by a serial killer. And... Uh, I play a Philadelphia homicide detective and I get all involved in the mix. It's pretty, pretty interesting. It's actually a pretty cool you know, movie. So those are the two things. Then I have some other offers and other things that I'm thinking about. But right now, you know, I'm just excited about SWAT, you know, and looking forward to going to the studio, starting on this new record. And last question about SWAT. If you could sum up the movie in three words, what would they be? Nothing but action. Straight up action, baby. Straight up action. A lot of fun. Question is about the new album. Yeah. Like, um, what's the zone? Are you trying to recapture the same magic you had with what's the 411, or is it a whole different? 